Grace family, I want to personally thank you for how generous you guys have been during this season. As we know, there are no on-campus, in-person meetings or church services here through the end of March and quite likely uh, a while beyond that. But you guys have just been so incredible that there have been many of you actually say, Pastor Jeff, how do we give? How do we continue to keep our church strong during this time? There are two ways that I would encourage you to give. Number one would be text to give. You can text Grace WPB to 77977 or through our website at gogracefellowship.org forward slash give. Through that option, you'll be able to do online recurring giving. Guys, I love you. Let's walk together. Let's continue to be generous through this time and see what the Lord does in our lives and as a church family. I love you so much. Thank you for being with us. Welcome again to Grace Fellowship, a church for all nations online. Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning, whether you're tuning in on our website, through our app, or through social media on your small screen or on your big screen. And I'm going to ask you something that another pastor has never asked you. In the history of your church experience, you've never heard another pastor ask this of you. Today, I'm going to ask that you keep your cell phone on especially if you're watching through your cell phone. If you're watching through another device, this is a great opportunity to take any other uh, device that you have and share this service, share this content with other people. And as we uh, prepare to dive into God's word this morning in Philippians chapter 4, I just want to say that Grace Fellowship, you have been above and beyond as a church family, above and beyond Proactive, You guys uh, have been absolutely incredible in the way that you have reached out to the community and reached out to one another. And it is, to say the least, it is profoundly moving to your pastor that in these times you guys have responded so well and so appropriately and so gospel-centered to the moving of the Spirit of God. And and, in this gathering uh, right now, we we have some of our staff, uh, right now we have a whopping four people in this room other than the pastor. Can you guys here who are making all this happen, can you let everybody else know that you're here and multiply yourselves just like Gideon's men with the, uh, with the loudness and the volume and uh, the presence that you have. So I am, for the most part, other than my brothers and my sister right here, preaching to an empty room, but we are together as a faith family. And so I'm just imagining where you are uh, in your homes or in your car or in the backyard or wherever it you may be, that we want this to be a time to where we center and focus around the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, this this whole experience is somewhat new, even though at Grace we've offered online um, services for quite a while, but you know the large part of us we we want to be here and be with one another. Um, but I was thinking last week that if you're an introvert, the greeting time last time was probably the best meet and greet of all time. Furthermore, last Sunday, if you noticed the time on the sermon, it was somewhere around 52 to 53 minutes. And let me tell you. It was an incredible amount of fun. And I just say, you know, we're just going to preach as long as we can and give you more content because the more you're focused on the message from God's word, the less some of us are going to be pulled into um, some uh, sources of of news uh, that may inflame further um, the fears that we have in our heart right now. And this is a unique time. Uh, This is an unparalleled, unprecedented time, but we have an incredible opportunity. In fact, some of us have likely found ourselves 
uh, preparing to pray or trying to work through the process of, of speaking to the Lord. And I'd, I'd like just for a few moments to give you an, uh, a look into our home with our two boys, a prayer time that we had together just a couple of days ago. So we have a short clip, and we're going to roll that to show you uh, some of the prayers that we're praying at the Robinson house. Say, dear Lord. Daddy. The Lord. Daddy. Thank you for my yummy grapefruit. Thank you for my yummy grapefruit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. And help the virus to go away. And help the virus to go away. And please help the cowboys. And please help the cowboys. Win the Super Bowl. Win the Super Bowl. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't be that. So as, as you can see at the Robinson household, we pray for big prayers, big, large, fantastic, God-glorifying miracles. And I think we just went down to three. Uh, one of our uh, staff here who is not a Dallas Cowboys fan at all literally left the room. I don't, oh, there he is standing in the corner. I still love you, bro. I'm still glad you're kind of here. So uh, I may let you know who he is later on. So during this, this time that... Uh, if some of us can just take a break and take a breath and consider what is before us, I believe it's wise for us to go to Philippians chapter 4 for the next several Sundays. And so if, if you have your Bibles, I'd encourage you to open those to Philippians chapter 4. Today we're going to be in verses 1 through 3, and we're going to talk about the theme of unity and how it is the Lord's desire that as followers of Christ we pull together around the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because in this time, whether in our businesses, in our neighborhoods, in our homes, in our personal relationships, we're likely battling all sorts of internal emotions and fears. And what we want to do is to stand firm in the hope of Jesus Christ. So let's begin to walk through this text and we'll see the power that the Lord Jesus Christ gives us through his word. So how do we stand and firm in a time like this. Notice in chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, my brothers, this is the Apostle Paul who's speaking, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. Now notice this incredible imagery, these, these precious words that the Apostle Paul is laying on these believers. He, he speaks to them as brothers. And so as, as we seek to stand firm during this time, guys, one of the things that I have to remember, that you have to keep in mind, that we all have to keep before us, is let's speak words of life to one another. Because any time we get pressure placed on us and we're dealing with stuff inside of us, we have a natural tendency to lose heart and then we lash out. Notice the Apostle Paul who's, who's writing from prison and he's saying, he's saying that I, I love and long for you. You are my joy and my crown. There's such words, just like that photo expresses of like watering one another's souls, saying, you know what, I, I love you and I'm going to speak words of life to you. The Apostle Paul's wanting to be with these other believers, and I don't think at any other point in my life, especially as a pastor and as your pastor, that these words have been so incredibly impactful to me. You see the longing of the Apostle Paul to be with the people of God. And I love Grace Fellowship, a church for all nations. I cannot wait until the time that we are able to gather together again and get our praised on together and worship through the teaching of God's word and be mutually encouraged by looking around the room and say, it's not just me. There's other followers of Jesus Christ. And when we speak words of life, when we speak words of encouragement, when we build one another up, especially in days like these, that's what allows us to have often more difficult conversations. And so the Apostle Paul says here to stand firm thus in the Lord. So he gives this encouragement, and then he also says, my beloved. Grace, let's not let distance destroy us. 
Let's not let the physical separation that we're experiencing right now from one another in terms of our small groups and our ministry teams and our corporate gatherings, let's, let, let's not allow that to bring us further apart, but let it activate our desire to reach out to our neighbors and to our area. And as we're going to see the Apostle Paul in this passage, he emphasizes relational connection, relational unity before, and we're going to get to this in several weeks, before he starts unpacking the idea of joy. And joy is that, is that deep sense of peace regardless of the circumstances that we're in. Often in our lives, we look for joy before we work through the relational tension. And we see an incredible picture of this from the Apostle Paul to he speaks words of life to the other believers. And notice there in verse 2, uh, we see these interesting words. It says, I entreat Euodia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Now, this is interesting. You're like, why are we talking about this passage? Listen. There's two people whose names are in the Bible because they couldn't get along. I want that just to soak right now in our hearts and our minds. There's two people whose names are recorded in Scripture because they lost sight of the mission. So in these days... One of the ways that we can stand firm is where we agree to assume the best about each other. We agree to assume the best, no matter all of the, the lines of communication that sometimes are so frayed right now and we're trying to figure out what are we going to do, there can often be the projection of those negative emotions upon our coworkers and upon our family members. But we want to agree to assume the best about one another. Euodia means fine traveling and Syntyche means accident. And so we don't know exactly why these ladies had a clash. But there was a clash that was to the point that the Apostle Paul writes it in the Bible. And imagine being there in that church setting and this letter is being read. And he names two people and says, agree in the Lord. Guys, we will all be remembered for something. In this historic time, let us be remembered as individual followers of Christ and as a church family, as exemplary people of strength and unity. I want to encourage you, as your friend and as your pastor this morning, stand firm in the midst of uncertainty. Hey, we can have disagreements about how best to prepare and paths to take, but we always want to separate the issue from our love for the person. These two ladies in the Bible forgot who the enemy really was and where the battle was. The Apostle Paul is saying, guys, the battle is not with one another. The battle is out there. So how do we agree to think the best about one another? Notice in verse 3 as it continues, the Apostle Paul writes, Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Notice this imagery of true companion, or if you get really literal, a yoke fellow, someone who is walking with you, someone who's serving with you. And right now, as a community, as a state, as a nation, as a church, as a family, we want to serve together. Amen? We want to stick together so that we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and we remember that the battle is not with one another. The battle is not with mom and dad. It's not with husband and wife. Life. It's not with the neighborhood. The battle is not there. And if it's true that as followers of Christ, we are yoke fellows and yoke sisters and we're pulling together in the right direction, then let's go on the offensive. And here's how we do this, guys, in a very practical way. Let's be prepared. I need to be prepared and you need to be prepared to give one another loads and loads of grace, compassion, Patience, grace upon grace upon grace. 
And it's in this time that I would encourage you to laugh. I'd encourage you to say, you know what, I don't want to take myself too serious. I want to enjoy the moment that God has given us, even though there's fear, even though there's uncertainty, even though I feel the tendency to worry. I want to not waste this moment in which there could be a beautiful outpouring of the Spirit of God on the world. There's an untapped power when a family becomes unified. When they say, you know what? We're scared, we're uncertain, but we are a family and we will stick together. There's untapped potential when you get a group of business people or you get an employer and employees together say, you know what, we're not exactly sure what to do right now, but one thing we're going to do is we're going to stick together as best we can. When you get a church who says, you know what, our mission has always been to make disciples of all nations. And in this moment, more people are thinking about life and death and eternity than any other time that I can remember in my very short life, unless you're a high schooler and you think that Pastor Jeff is ancient. More than any other time, people's hearts are being opened right now. There's an untapped potential when people of the cross gather together and there's a unity of focus to the glory of God. And in his book, God in the dark, Os Guinness writes these words. Battered emotions can produce a crop of doubts just as devastating as the militant atheist's toughest questions. And I believe in the weeks to come, there's going to be a call for us as Christians to look to the Lord Jesus Christ when sometimes the fear and the fatigue can begin to gnaw at your soul. And your, your patience can become whittled away bit by bit by bit. It seems like your wherewithal can become chopped down day by day by day as the stress begins to mount. And unbat- battered emotions can lead, brothers and sisters, to unnecessary Doubt that can immobilize your service to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it's so critical that you and your family and here at this church and in your neighborhoods that we remember that we are on the same team. British scholar Alistair McGrath in his book, Doubting, Growing Through the Uncertainties of Faith, he writes these words, and I want you to um, substitute the word here, doubt, with the word virus. A preoccupation with doubt or the current circumstance is just as pointless as a preoccupation with death. It doesn't change the situation and it converts your attention from the opportunities that the life of faith has to offer. We've continually heard the words unprecedented, right? You guys? And we, got, we have five here now. Yo, you guys give it up. We got five people in the house now. That's what I'm talking about. Church growth, baby. Yeah. So, so we've all heard, hey, there we go. We, we've all heard this word, right? Unprecedented and unparalleled. This is an unparalleled opportunity. Our theme, our focus this year is who's your one. Each one can reach one. And when we prayed and we sought the heart of God last year, little did we know that this, this time, this season, this testing was going to come on us in the early parts of this brand new year. Guys, we are on the same Team, I encourage you to take the opportunity of closer connections with people, not in terms of physicality, social distancing, right, but being able to converse with people. I remember going to Publix last week and just trying to, to conversate with people around the store, and one of our guys works there, and you know who you are. It's like I, he introduced me to the entire uh, managerial staff of Publix. I was like, you guys are awesome. Like I wanted to start giving them high fives, but I couldn't. Because that would be a bad example, right? And saying, thank you guys so much for doing what you're doing. Let me just say, for our, our law enforcement and for our medical professionals and for those that are working, the cash registers at stores and so many others, you guys are my hero. Can we, all five of us in the room, can we give it up and you give it up in your home that when you go out and when you interact with anybody who's keeping this whole thing running in terms of goods and services, we take the 
opportunity to give gospel-centered encouragement with the hope of introducing them to the one who can solve our biggest problem. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ who can solve the problem of sin, death, and hell. The Apostle Paul says, let's help one another. We labored, fought. It's the imagery of inside the Roman arena, side by side with me in the gospel. We know this on a variety of levels, that teamwork makes the dream work. We must, in these days, we must act like a team, like a faith family team, a biological or adopted family, where we link arms together and we advance together. And I just have to say something uh, here for the in-house. If you're a member of Grace Fellowship Church, I cannot wait to dedicate all of these babies that will be born next year to the glory of God. And I think that generation will be called the Coronials. I don't know exactly. I'm just going to drop that out there right now. But guys, in a fallen world, we, we have limited choices, do we not? We know one choice we can make, that if we begin to bite and devour one another right now, we are guaranteed to fail. But if we unify and we speak life and we assume the best about one another, there is no telling what God can do. So I was looking at the tracker from Johns Hopkins University. It's interesting that across the entire world at this point, we are all affected. From Iran all the way to Luxembourg to Switzerland to Brazil, when we suffer together, there is, to use the word, an unparalleled opportunity to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because when you suffer together, it can bring you together. It can cause you to understand the pain and the fear that one another experience. And uh, from the great scholar and philosopher, Matthew McConaughey, he recently made this statement. And I know there may be some ladies out there that are saying right now, thank you, Jesus, for creating that man. Because you told you say in your word that you created it all and it was very good. You said that, Lord, thank you for creating that man. Some of y'all think that's too far, but you can go ahead and turn down the volume. This is what he said. We have an enemy in coronavirus that is faceless, that is raceless, sexless, non-denominational, and bipartisan. And it's an enemy that we all agree we want to beat and where he's from Texas, we're going to beat. The Apostle Paul here, man, that, that's a great statement, ties together with so well, where he's saying that we are laboring side by side. And he names certain people, and he says, the rest of my fellow workers. The Apostle Paul is saying, guys, for us to get to joy, we have to remember not to tear and bite at one another, we're on the same team. So if we're on the same team for the glory of God, let's speak life into one another. Let's remember to assume the best about one another. And for our guys, this is our day of testing. If you're a man listening to this, here's a verse for all of us. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. This is the Apostle Paul once again writing under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. He says, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, Act like men. Be strong. Guys, these are the days that we will look back upon. And I pray for all of us that we will be able to look back on this time and to be able to say, even though inside I, I, was, I was afraid, and I'm thinking, man, I got a, a wife and, and children, or, or I, I have responsibilities. You're thinking, what about my business? What about my job? What about all of these things? But may it be a time in our life to where we step up and man up, even in the midst of our uncertainty and fear, and we say through the power of Jesus Christ, I want to stand firm. Stand firm. Act like men. Your families are looking to you. Through the power of Christ, you can do it and stand firm. 
And for those of us that, quite honestly, are chronically negative people, if you have the Eeyore soundtrack as your workout mix, this is your time. If you have a poster of Ebenezer Scrooge in your room, if you say not only is the glass is the glass half empty, but you pick up the glass and try to throw it at somebody. You know what I'm talking about? There may be somebody watching this with you, and you don't want to make, you don't want to move a muscle because they're going to think that you're talking about them. You know, like he is talking about you, and you'll get in trouble. But this is your moment. If you find yourself sliding into the ditch time after time after time again into negativity, this is your opportunity to allow the Spirit of God to do a deep retooling in your heart so that you no longer find comfort in negativity or peace in misery, but you rise up and step up and become an encourager and a positive contributor in your home, in your church, in your community for the glory of Jesus Christ. And finally, at the end of verse 3, notice these words. The Apostle Paul brings it all back to the main thing, whose names are in the book of life. Whose names are in the book of life. The Apostle Paul is saying, hey guys, we're on the same team, and even though we may have tension here, let me remind us all of the ultimate reality that our names are written in the book of life. That's all of those who have repented of their sin and placed their trust in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone and will be with him one day. Guys, it's when we lose heart, it's when we lash out. So let's not lose heart. Instead of lashing out, let's reach out with encouragement and love. C.S. Lewis makes this incredible statement in his book, Mere Christianity. He says, now faith in the sense of which I am using the word is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted in spite of our change of moods. And so for our five here in the house and for you there in your house, have we not all collectively experienced a change of moods? Like Titanic level, right? Like things clicking along and all of a sudden this happens. So where many of us are thinking so differently about school, about eating out, about social connections, one of my friends who serves uh, as a volunteer contributor for gotquestions.org, and he said the number one question submitted right now revolves around the topic of, is this the end of the world? An article just this past week from Tel Aviv, Israel, a man returned a 2,000-year-old catapult bolt it's called a ballista to the Israel Antiquities Authority some 15 years after he took it from the archaeological site of the Jerusalem Walls National Park in the city of David. And here's the reason why he returned what he stole. Quote, I wanted to clear my conscience before the end of the world. Say, Pastor Jeff, are these the end of days? We've been in the end times ever since Jesus ascended into heaven. And today, the question for us is where are we with Jesus Christ? You see, our standing with Jesus is always a relevant question, it's always been a relevant topic. It's just that when things are going well, for most of us, we say, well, man, everything's going well. Like, why do I need to think about God? Like, I got things to do. I got cruises to go on. I got, I got trips to make. I've got money to bring home. Like, I got, all, I got all this entertainment. Like, I have things, fun and life and making my life and my name great. Why, why, why do I need to take time to consider that? But this is our moment of, of clarity. This is our moment of clarity. To where we begin to consider maybe some of us for the first time with a clear mind, truly thinking about life, understanding what it's all about. That the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 that it is appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. What will bring us through this time? A clear head and a steady hand. May it be that as followers of Christ, we pray, Lord Jesus, give me a clear head and a steady 
hand during this time. One evidence of clear thinking is to understand what our greatest problem is. And this may be news to some of us, but our greatest problem is not the coronavirus or the impacts that we're seeing throughout the world, whether it be economically or otherwise. Our greatest problem is our separation from God because of our sin and our brokenness. It's that we've all pursued things that broke God's heart. We've all wandered from where we should be. And the beautiful news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that even though we're all broken and we all have a need of a deliverer, that God actually sent his son Jesus for us. We can never climb the mountain to get to him, but he came down off the mountain to come down to us. So in these days, as we, as we seek to speak life into one another, as we seek to be patient with one another, let me encourage you to look to Jesus Christ. It may be that for some of us, this is the very first time we've ever considered these things. And for some of us who are followers of Christ, we may know Jesus, but we've gotten so distracted from him. May it be that in these days, we come back to what it's all about and who it's all about. And his name is Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being with us today. We hope the message and music impacted you deeply and moved both your heart and your mind to love the Lord Jesus Christ more. Here are four steps I would encourage you to consider. First, examine your heart. Where are you with Jesus Christ? Are you following after him or running away from him? Has there been a time when Jesus has changed your heart? Has your life genuinely been changed? If not, you can repent and follow Jesus today. To repent is to change your mind, to turn away from your sin and your brokenness and place your confidence and trust in Jesus. Jesus never finds us just to leave us as we were, but to transform us into who we should be. Have you been baptized by immersion since Jesus has changed your heart? If you would like to be baptized, let us know by filling out the online connect card and we will reach out to you. Second, share this content with others. With a click of a button, you could be instrumental in bringing someone out of despair into the hope of Jesus Christ. One share, one email, one retweet could result in one person being beautifully transformed by the grace of Jesus Christ. Third, take some time and pray for those with you. If you're alone, reach out to someone and ask how you can pray for them. Finally, if you're a member or regular attender and wish to give, you can do so by clicking the give link below. I look forward to when we are able to gather in person again, but until then, we pray for a clear head and a steady hand. I love you guys, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Hang in there.